short answer, no. <laughs> Absolutely not, no. You literally can't even beat the tutorial level. However, what if I were to tell you, well no, it's unfortunately not possible to beat Super Mario Sunshine without the implementation of the Flash Liquidizer Ultra Dowsing Device, aka the Flood. I set myself on a task to discover how many Shine Sprites you truly can obtain without the use of the Flood. The rules for this challenge are simple, because, you know, it's a YouTube challenge and it has to have uh, rules after all. The only real rule to this challenge is I'm not allowed to take Flood into any of the levels. Any level which requires me to take in Flood uh, will be counted as unbeatable for this challenge. And thus, with our rules set in stone, we settle across a path to discover instead of can you beat Super Mario Sunshine without Flood, it's how many Shine Sprites can you obtain without the Flood. Our journey starts us off at Airport Delfino where for some reason there is some that we have to clean up because the residents of Aldo Fino are too lazy to do it themselves. Right. The thing about this stage is that we are kind of stuck here because, you know, no flood. So, yep, yeah, that, that clears the end of the video. Back it up, boys. Um, yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll get them next time. Anyway, let's just, let's, anyways, let's just equip floods with this one time. I'm sure he'll never see the light of day ever again. I'm, I'm sure of it, lads. After obtaining the first of many shines, we are then sent to prison on account of accused murder and false vandalism. And instead of enjoying our time on Al Delfino, we have to clean up Al Delfino. But Beza, I hear you ask, isn't the point of this challenge and video is to not use Flood? And to that I say, yes. We then are set on our path once again to kill the paint piranha plant goop thing again. <sighs> All right, fine, Flood's needed again for this. Okay, cool, whatever, yep. Welcome to the team, buddy. After defeating the goopy bloopy piranha, there's just a giant statue that just comes out the ground for reasons I don't really know. It just kind of happens. And then BOOM! Shadow Mario. The shadow to my Sonic. The interesting thing about Shadow Mario, which I didn't mention earlier, is that you can't defeat Shadow Mario without the use of Flood. So yes, Flood is once again in our team. Wow, fun. Look, after taking him out, we then have to use Flood again to open the portal to a Bianco Hills, baby! And yep, you guessed it, we need Flood once again. However, for the first and only time of the entire run, we have an optional level, meaning we don't actually have to take out the goopy bloopy poopy piranha plant for the third time now. So, that's great, right? You know, we can just go collect the second shine set- NOPE! It's Petey Piranha, and yes, you need water once again to kill Petey Piranha. After taking out Petey Piranha, I was just starting to lose hope in how many levels we could actually beat without the use of the Flood, because so far, we've not been able to beat a single level without the use of Flood. Until, out of nowhere, a savior came from the heavens to bless me with Bianco Free, Hillside Cave Secret. And if you don't know why this is a godsend, it's because this mission is a mission where Shadow Mario takes Flood away from you. And considering the challenge we're doing, he technically did nothing to us whatsoever. So, it's a cakewalk. Moving on to Bianco 4, I had some worries about the mission, only because there's one coin that just floats in the middle of the air for reasons I once again don't know, because kids game. Kids got a game, got a game. But thankfully, with a well-timed jump and one of the worst game mechanics ever, waiting, got the other red coins needed and moved on to Bianco 5! And yeah, this one is not possible again without Flood. So let's just move on. Bianco 6's Secret Dirty Lake. My biggest worry with this stage was probably having to do the leap of faith into the water, hopefully onto the logs. So with a very high jump, a leap of faith if you may. From the top of the windmill we were able to luckily get into the secret course, get the shine and move on to Bianco 7. God damn it! It's Shadow Mario. Whatever, we'll just... Yeah. After beating Shadow Mario, we then move on to Rico Harbor. Not before taking out that bloopy poopy plant monster with our trusty floody buddy who I just love and adore so much and I would never want anything bad to happen to him. Going into Rico Harbor, I expect this one to be done basically in its entirety without Flood, but to my surprise, it wasn't. You see, Rico Harbor introduces a mini boss called Goopa Blooper, and to defeat him, you have to pull off his four tentacles. Seems simple enough, right? WRONG! Well, yes, you can pull off the four tentacles very easily. To deal damage, there's a cork on his face that you have to yank off. But the problem is, he's got ink on his face. And if you try to pull it off with the ink, Mario just kind of slips, thus making the first level just unbeatable. So, oh, not the greatest start, I'm not gonna lie. After coming out of that level, I had something I never feel whenever I upload a video or do anything. Hope. 
But anyways, luckily, Rico 2, Blooper Surfing Racing, this level is self-explanatory, and this one was, once again, another godsend. Because Flood is not required. No, f no Flood whatsoever. You don't need him to hover, shoot, rocket, or jet across any type of water. You literally become Tony Hawk Pro Skater for a few minutes in the game. And it's probably the best experience in Super Mario Sunshine, just because there is no flood whatsoever. Until we get to Rico 3, the cage shining. Yeah, this one was quite simple, actually. Um, moving on. Rico 4's secret of Rico Tower. Once again, it was floodless level, so it was easy. No, no danger there. Rico 5, however, the stupid Goopa Blooper decides to come back once more and try to be a bit. <sighs> I beg game, please. Let, let the next level be an 8 red coin mission where I get to write goop bloopers so I can make another Tony Hawk Pro Skater reference. <laughs> After going through heaven, aka mission 6 of Rico Harbor, we now move on to Rico 7. <laughs> yep, it sure is Rico 7. Now that we're done Rico Harbor, we can now move on to Gelato Beach. And I'll be honest, this one was a real doozy. Getting into the first level requires me to shoot the roots in the ground to arise a giant sandcastle that then takes away your flood from you. So, first mission is impossible. Gelato 2 also requires you to use the flood to take out these cataquack things, these suction cataquacks, whatever they're called, to heal the green wiggle on top of the thingy. And yeah, once again, another unbeatable mission. And Gelato 3 Wiggler Ahoy once again requires you to have to f use the flood to, f to do the root things and ground pound the Wiggler. <laughs> Are there any levels in Gelato that don't require the flood, I hear you say? And to that I say, Sandbird. <laughs> yep, it sure is. Gelato 5's El Pantissimo's Sand Sprint. Yep, it's just a glorified 3D side scroller in a 3D Mario game. How fun and intuitive of a kid's game to put me in a 3D side scroller. How how did Nintendo do that? How do they do only Nintendo? Do what Nintendo don't. Don't make a 3D side scroller. Come on. Final mission that we really have to care about is Gelato 6. A red coins in the coral reef. Yep, just another glorified eight red coins. Let's just let's just get the shine. Take out Mario, take his shine, and move on to Peanut Park, baby. Now <laughs> Let me tell you, I was very, very surprised at this area and how many shine sprites were obtainable without flood. The first mission Mecha Bowser appears surprised me the most when it came to this challenge because you're stationary in a roller coaster and you have to shoot rockets at Mecha Bowser in order to defeat him. And when you start off, it puts you in the position as if you have flood on your back without him even being there. And that gave me confidence it would be a breeze. But come to find out, once you shoot the first rocket, Mario goes back into his idle stance after a while. The rocket behaves in a way that makes it almost impossible to even hit Mecha Bowser. I spent roughly an hour on this stage, almost coming to terms that this stage may not be possible without Flood until it finally happened. Here is how I managed to do it. When firing the first shot, make sure you do it far away enough to where you are about to go through the loop-de-loop, -loop, hopefully hitting Mecha Bowser. Then pick up the second rocket, go into the third person, and aim the rocket as close to Bowser's feet as possible, hoping it hits his jank-ass hitbox, because god forbid you don't hit it. Then after picking up the third rocket after getting hit by the bullet bill from above, do a downward shot, hopefully hitting the top of Mecha Bowser's head, and picking up the fourth and final rocket by hitting his foot. If you somehow missed the fourth shot, you get one more chance where you'd normally do the second shot. And if you managed to do all of that, you should have defeated Mecha Bowser, learn that Shadow Mario is in fact Bowser Jr. Shock, horror, whoa. Grab your shine sprite and move on. That stage was absurd to play through. Now that that is out of the way, let's move on to the stage that requires less thinking. The Beach Cannon Secret, this stage is pretty simple, just gotta do a slick kick into the hole and you're transported into yet another floodless level. Yeah, cool. Next is yet another glorified 8 red coins, and this is probably the hardest red coin mission out of all the red coin missions in this run. Because originally, you would have the hover nozzle, which make jumps like these so much easier to do, but since you don't, you have to be doing precise jumps, you have to you have to go off the beaten path to go from high places to jump down. Like, you, you gotta do all this stuff. 
and trust me since i'm a pro gamer i was able to do some of these jumps on my first try i felt pretty cool right after messing it up the trick but you, you know what i mean let's just move on mission four puts us between the rock and a hard place because we have to kill these yoshi egg things for reasons i don't really know why because what they have seeds for the flowers that are dying? Anyway, first level so far with having to use Flood. Hopefully there's no more. But then this is where the run gets a little interesting. You see, once collecting that Shine Sprite, Shadow Mario has taken hostage of Yoshi and we gotta rescue him. But once collecting Yoshi, you realize that Yoshi has juice, not water juice which is very interesting to me for the sake of the intentional game design of it saying juice and not water anything that we shoot out of yoshi will be deemed as juice and not water with the knowledge of yoshi we now have we go to a mission that doesn't have yoshi peanut park 5 the runaway ferris wheel and this one <laughs> was agonizing to do because it requires you to go around the back of the ferris wheel and shoot these panels with water and climb around and not falling. And since, well, you know, we don't have flood, we can't shoot them. Thus making this level even harder than it already is with the bad camera. After getting to the halfway point, you have to make a hard read and hope you can wall kick off this already stupid wall onto a barbed floor and do a leap of faith onto another barbed floor above that to do a jump onto a rope to kill the big electric rodent thing. Well, let's just grab the shine get out of here and let's just come back and go to merry-go-round peanut six the yoshi merry-go-round is a very basic stage find yoshi give him fruit make him orange make him become one with the ferris wheel go into a secret floodless level go fight shadow mario then move on to noki bay noki bay has probably some of the most challenging platforming in the run as the first stage uncork the waterfall because there's a cork clock out the waterfall because you know game logic and kids game you can climb all the way up to where the cork is but you can't actually beat the level because there is once again another mole similar to one back at peanut park that is blocking up the waterfall and you need bombs to kill him because it, it, whatever we'll just take out the mole grab the shine and move on wahooing our way over to the boss of tricky ruins awaits a boss battle against yet another gooper blooper and similar to the previous two battles with the Goopa Blooper, it's also not possible to beat without the Flood. Well, beating it the intended way at least. It's very much possible to collect the Shine Sprite without having to even interact with the Goopa Blooper. If you go back to the, the small body of water at the top of the Noki Bay, there is a spring right above it that if touched by water, it shrinks. And kicking some water at the spring by doing a precise spinning wall kick, you can shrink the spring go over to the corner, throw the spring while running at the corner and doing a dive as soon as you clip through the wall, you can collect the star without flood. <sighs> Gee, I sure, I sure hope that we don't have to go into some kind of jar. Oh, that, that would be unfortunate, you know. Noki Bay's red coins in a jar puts us in any fictional character's nightmare. Being captive inside a jar filled with liquid and the worst part about this mission, if you go into it without flood equipped, Mario just becomes a bag of rocks and can't move. So not only is the mission not possible without Flood, Mario just isn't able to move. So yeah, mission three is that fork in the road. Moving on to Noki Bay's Ely Mouth Dentist. It's yet another underwater stage where we have to clean the teeth of an eel, or would it be a couple of eels as there are two eels attached to one? But of course, Mario becomes a bag of rocks once again, not being able to move. So write that one down as unbeatable, yeah, whatever. Yahooing our way onto Noki Bay's El Pantissimo Surf Swim, we come to find out that the stage is actually beatable without the flood, with the use of the flood? Who would have thought? Yet peeing our way onto the Shell Secret, we are tasked with going to the Shell Secret, which is just another floodless level, so this one's pretty easy to do. And then of course, a Mario stage. Oh no. Anyway, going straight into this first stage, the Manta Storm, I already kind of had an idea of how it was going to turn out, and yeah, I was right for once in my life. Not possible to be without Flood. What I expect, it's a mini boss. Our next mission takes us into the hotel to realize there is an infestation of pink ghosts in the main lobby. If only there was a man in green who could suck up all these ghosts for us. Going to the top of the pillar in the main lobby, we find yet another floodless stage. Cool, whatever. Serena Free finds us in the lobby once more. And I had some hope going into this stage, which is something I still don't ever feel. But like most things, it came crashing down as you need to kill these big boos that are blocking the path to get to the shine. And even if you go the intended path it's still not possible because you have to shoot this painting of a boo 
with water and well you know no flood not possible let's just move on so with that sad news we go test our luck in la and spend 30 minutes trying to do a stupid wall kick to glitch out of the map into a floodless level but since i suck at video games i also deem this impossible as the original intent of this mission is to spin the roulette wheels and flip a bunch of switches to get to the floodless mission so yeah another unbeatable stage very fun very cool Serena 5 finds us against King Boo in the casino once again. And yes, while you can get to the boss, you need water to actually activate King Boo's roulettes. So, moving on. Serena 6, scrubbing Serena Beach. I'll be 100% honest, I had a feeling that this stage might be possible without Flood, as they actually supply you with barrels of filled with water that can get rid of all the icky pink-like goop around uh, Serena Beach. But, for some reason, they don't supply you with enough barrels. Thus, making this one barely unbeatable. It was so close. Like, there were only a few small patches. If the game maybe supplied you with one or two more barrels, I'd say this stage might be possible without the flood. But, we have to claim it's unbeatable, so... Oh yeah, then there's a mission 7. Die, I'm running out of jokes for the Shadow Mario missions. And then we move on to the final area. Pianta Village. Going into the first stage, Chain Chomps Unchained, we are given the task of cooling down these baby Chain Chomps and then shoot them into the small body of water in the center of the town. However, I can't shoot water because, hey, look at that, no flood. But for some unknown reason, if you can lead the baby Chain Chomps over to the small island in the center of the body of water, they follow you onto the small island and they perish in the water. I I, I don't know how I discovered this. I was just kind of messing around, hoping something would work, and it worked. Anyway, do this three times. You got yourself a star, baby. Moving on to Pianta Village's El Pantissimo's crazy climb. Yep, you guessed it. It's a race. Moving on to the Goopy Inferno. This stage is quite similar to the Floodless Mario stages where Mario, hey, takes Flood away from you. However, with this one, there is no Shine Sprite already placed out. Instead, there is the Mare on top of the Golden Mushroom. And we need to clean him off. So, yeah, another unbeatable stage. Whatever, let's just go clean some big chain chomp for mission four, I guess. Pianta 5 is secret of the village. We're tasked with getting the Yoshi, shooting some pineapple thing that blocks the entrance. And would you look at that? Another floodless stage. And hoping that the Piantas are not taught by Shaquille O'Neal. And, and get that shine sprite and move on to Piantas in need. And you have to clean 10 villagers who somehow fell into molten lava. Lucky for them, Jumpman Mario is here to save the day with his trusty flood. Bloody buddy, yeah, this stage is impossible without the use of Flood. I did try to beat the stage without Flood, and they supply you with one barrel. And I couldn't even get one Pianta clean in the 2 minutes and 30 seconds they give you on this stage. So moving on to the final stage of Super Mario Sunshits, another Shadow Mario stage. Returning to Isle Delfino, Shadow Mario has done something worse than accuse an innocent man of crimes. Climate change. And it's up to Mario to head into the volcano and put a stop to him and yeah. The final level is impossible for two reasons. One, there are spots of fire that block your path from progressing any further into the volcano. And the reason number two, there is a boat and the second half of the mission, you need Flood to push the boat. Well, anyway, we grab Flood one last time. We go over to the final area. Pick up the rocket nozzle for the only time ever in this entire run. We then meet with Bowser, who is taking a bath for reasons that still don't make sense. Hit, hit, the, hit those five spots, fall to your demise, and come out victorious as Flood slowly dies in your arms, as he was only useful for about half the shines in this game. And so, with the Bowser level being our last level, the total tally out of the 50 shines we collected along our journey... 23 out of the 50 shine sprites we collected are indeed possible without the flash liquidizer ultra dowsing device, aka the flood. I'll be 100% honest, I I really enjoyed working on this project. I'm always looking to try out new things on the channel, and videos like these are great examples of that. If you guys and girls do want to see me make more videos like this, then like, drop a like I guess. And hey, why are you there? Even subscribe. I don't know, it's free, I'm not your mother. But do subscribe because my brain likes seeing numbers go up on a grid and it makes, it gives me a bunch of dopamine, you know what I mean? So in conclusion, I still do not know how to do outros properly.